changes. And we just finished Crisis C. No, Crisis C. <laughs> I'm messing up again. Uh, Flame Core, and we just got B rank. Uh, so so confusing, like talking which days is which for this um, game. They but they sound so similar. And we just got another gold medal. Wonder how much um, gold medals he have. And I think to blame for the B rank is that we just died in the Molten Lava, as I said I earlier. Chaos, and it. that is why. Oh, and we just missed. Uh, I really wanted to imitate Shadow there. I was going to say, don't touch it! Right when he was going to say the cutscene there. I really love that line from what Shadow said there. I think the, um, that was a really funny line, but <laughs> it was unnecessary for Shadow to say that. <laughs> and there was a, um, the, he really has a lot of um, funny um, lines in this game, I think, which I'm going to kind of explain later throughout the storyline. And right now, we're going through another boss. I think this is the second boss we're going to go through, and this is Iblis. Iblis is a tricky guy. This boss... I think it's mildly easy. It could be difficult for first um, players of the game, like in a blind playthrough, as you don't know it good, because there's some cheap parts to it. And um, you really have to know what you got to do in this um, level, because this one is more open through camera, and it does go onto Iblis at times for what it's moves he does. And we have um, we just have to keep him jumping on these platforms and wait for the sequence of action he does, because. Every time he throws a bunch of platforms for you to get closer. I don't know why. And um, also he throws a bit of molten rocks at you. <laughs> you have to run away from that platform. It, it kind of, it's kind of repeated. And it's a long, long, long boss. And what I like about this boss mostly is just the music that gets to be played. And it feels very intense, very, very interesting. My part. And... It's kind of like, it kind of drags you out. Because um, you're playing this um, boss, and you have this very smooth and very <laughs> tense music, as I said before. And you're just kind of waiting for Iblis to throw these platforms at you so you can get closer. So he gets interested to the light and he dives for it. And once he dives to it, you can get close to him and home attack on his head. So the home attack is very useful in 3D games. As I said before as well, that the home attack is going to be played out through most 3D games from now on. And a lot of people will be thinking that why couldn't home attack couldn't be portrayed as just like optional and doesn't really play much of a part in Sonic games. Like it should just be very manual as the classic games as a 2D part. And I do agree. If that there was no home attack portions in 3D games, it would have been better, but this, this is the problem, that Sonic runs too fast in the 3D plane as well, and his controls are very light compared to our platformers that are heavy. Probably the tightest control I've ever seen in Sonic games was Sonic Adventure 2, and um, we could um, just jump and just attack the enemies. I've done that before in 3D games, but it's a more slower time to do that, like just jump on an enemy and hit them. Because the Sonic um, enemies in the 3D games move, like, not from left to right as in the 2D games, they move around. Because I remember the vacuum from the original Sonic Adventure from Emerald Coast, and he moves around vibrantly, like, 360 degrees, so it was pretty hard to jump at him. So what I had to do was spin dash as well, alternative, not to use the home attack. So, I had a lot of fun this using uh, the spin dash as well. And, yeah, we haven't used the spin dash as well in this Let's Play. And the spin dash is um, this is, is the same as in any Sonic game. Like he spins and he goes straight. <clears throat> and what's the difference in the spin dash? Pre pretty much is that the physics change as well. Like most of the Sonic games, you, you would instantly tell when something's different is by the physics. And physics, I believe, does not play a big part. I think it, it's just down to the controls. The controls mostly physics is some sen sentiment to like the gameplay from the 2D Sonic games and um, you do we do have to obey some physics law it's, it's in every game and we don't want to have like broken physics in a game 
but it's more about the controls. Controls has to feel smooth and feel fresh. And the spin dash is that you hold the spin dash, and it charges uh, after I believe two to three seconds. Two to three seconds of charging the spin dash, and you can go at the same speed pace all the time. I'm not sure because I don't really test the spin dash a lot in this game. I didn't really use a spin dash. I only used a spin dash in the earlier 3D Summit games. I didn't really use a spin dash at all in the later 3D Summit games. That was um, the problem. I didn't use that much spin dash. Because um, it got taken down after when um, on niche gameplay was like, introduced. When they, um, they used the boost instead of the spin dash. And I didn't really I didn't really get to use the spin dash much often and with Sonic 6 spin dash it wasn't necessary because it took long to um, charge down and when you're in charge mode you couldn't get out of it. You couldn't jump out of it. As in game. So it would it would be you would hold on to it and you would um pretty much wait until it um the spin dash lets go of itself. So it's pretty much kinda of like a time sequence of probably ten five to ten seconds. Whereas in um, previous games, like you press the spin dash and you can jump out of it. Like you can do a spin dash jump. And <clears throat> I wish that Sonic 06 did implement that so I could have used a lot of his spin dash jump. Because spin dash jump is very special to me because spin dash jump can get you from places to other places very quickly in shortcuts. Depending on the level design that Sonic Team really wants to make out. And that's the most important thing, level design of um, the Sonic games and um, this level design from Sonic 06 was very expensive, very big and it would have taken a very long time to actually mix out with platform because with, with the open based um, environment that Sonic 06 had it missed the platforming sequence from some parts and um, it had some slopes there and there, it was pretty cool but it kind of didn't mix with the platform and that's what they needed to have on the mind and it did feel like a actual 3D Sonic no game problem. for this game because it was very open based and it wasn't linear. Linear would be the, the worst cause for any Sonic game. Because, um, well, not for any worse for any Sonic game, I mean, for any 3D Sonic game. Because 3D is the most important part for any game that will tackle through. It's not really about the gimmick of the character. It should be about the open base, the open 3D environment that the character can explore in shouldn't be linear as 2D. 2D has got the linearity spit, uh, he's got, it's got right on, right on the note, because you can't really do much with 2D in the environment that the 3D should tackle. And Sonic 06 did uh, have more open based environments than we have seen in the stages. And right now we're in another cutscene. Yep. Another cutscene to show the time warp. Pretty cool. They're trying to get out into the f present now. Ow. Yep, so Sonic Knuckles and Tails is back in Soniana Town. Like is it Soniana Town, Soniana New City? Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. There is three hub worlds for this game. We only have seen two, and this is Soliana New City. Soliana New City is the production of um, the new city getting built for Soliana. I think they're still in production, if I remember from the storyline, but it's a new city and they're creating new stuff and blah blah. Uh, this is something, another hub to extend um, the gameplay, like you can just roam around whenever you want and collect medals and do missions. Beforehand, from the start of it, was um, the old Soliana which has been the sentiment of um, where Princess Elise lives in a castle, I think. Or does she live in Kingdom Valley, which we're going to do later? I'm not sure. Pretty screwed up in that part. And, um, yeah, it's got some portals there and there for um, action stages to go through. So there's two parts, and we're going to wait probably for the next let's scene for that. So that's pretty much that from there. And right now we're gonna go and get another item. This item, I'm not sure. And yeah, this item, what it does is the bounce attack. Now Sonic has the bounce attack. It was first originally introduced in Sonic Adventure 2. And right now, 
I believe that is all, f all for it, folks. Well, for the next time for the Let's Play, we are going to tackle through some more action stages, be up some more bag nets, and have more enjoyment from my talking. And perhaps, I beg, perhaps I can have another guest to torment on this Let's Play, because I love to throw a lot more questions <laughs> rather than me talking through it, because I normally stray off from um, the actual Let's Play. And there you go to it. For now, what for now? Goodbye.